This is called a CC2, and it claims to allow its users to type at the speed of thought. Now, this is created by a company called Caracorder, and the way it works is that you have these joysticks that each of your five fingers sit on, and you can press them in four directions and also into the device. So if I push my right index finger left, that I type an A key. If I push it down, that's the T key. But that's only half the story because you can actually t do something called cording on this too. So if I press B and C at the same time, that types the entire word because, all in that one motion. If this device lives up to its promise, this is gonna be kind of bittersweet for me because I love traditional keyboards. I love how they feel, I love how they sound. I've spent thousands of dollars and countless hours investing into this hobby. So as much as I'd like to type at the speed of thought, it's gonna be a little sad if this turns out to deliver on its promise. But typing that fast sounds pretty compelling as well. So we'll see. Now I am not typing at the speed of thought yet. I usually type anywhere between 15 and 20 words per minute. That's using only the single character entry. I'm not using chords yet. I suspect many people that buy this device will never get to that speed of thought level. That's just a sad truth because the learning curve is so steep. But for a benefit like typing at 250 words a minute, a steep learning curve might be a small price to pay. After about two days, I had the entire layout memorized. And I was, I was thinking originally that this would be like learning to type all over again, but it turned out to be a little bit easier than that because, and I think the reason is because when you're learning to type on a QWERTY keyboard, part of learning is knowing where the letters are, but the other part of learning is knowing where to move your fingers such that you actually land on another key instead of between two keys or off to the side of a key or whatever. You don't have to worry about that aspect of it when you're learning on this thing. I'm just gonna show you where I'm at real quick. Okay, P-A-R. Ooh, got 24, nice. So I'm improving, but I still have a long way to go. When I saw these videos that you see on YouTube of the Caracorder CEO typing words insanely fast and typing each word with only one, one motion, it looked really satisfying, and I was wondering if that it's actually as satisfying as it looks, and the answer is yes. Right out of the gate, when you first buy this device, it's gonna tell you, they're gonna tell you to go and practice single character entry. What you need to do, this is, this is important advice, okay? What you need to do when you first get this device, don't listen to them, don't start with single letters, go into a text editor and type B and C at the same time, over and over again, and just spam because, like, just get it out of your system, because this right here, is really satisfying. Two letter, you move two fingers and the entire word because pops onto the screen. Amazing. And if you miss it, if you type them like slightly out of sync, all you have to do is keep trying again and eventually it'll, once you get it, it'll replace the entire thing with because. And then you can do the by pushing your, your two index fingers down. Those are the two chords I know. And even though I only know two chords, sitting here and typing them right now is just really fun. The, the switches are tactile. So when you press a switch, in any direction, you're going to feel it, right? It's like it's like a brown switch basically on keyboards, but a lot quieter. It's not nearly as loud as a brown switch. When you press into the device, I mentioned each joystick goes four directions, and then you can also press it down. The the down press, which is not mapped to anything for most of the joysticks on on the board, I think the higher actuation force of that downward press is the reason why they didn't map anything to those motions by default. But they're totally usable. The actuation force is. It feels like an, like an 80 gram switch or something like that. So it's a heavy actuation force, but nothing that is unusable. The comfort of this made me realize that it would be worth using even if I get no speed benefit. I think I will continue to use this device even if I get to my QWERTY typing speed and am not able to get past that because it is substantially more comfortable to type on than a QWERTY keyboard. And you, you, you talk about layouts like Dvorak and Colmac keeping your fingers closer to the home row for more of the time. This seems like a step beyond that, right? Because your, your fingers are essentially never leaving the home row effectively. There are two joysticks that are not on the, that your fingers don't rest on. And to get to those, you would have to move your fingers off the, the main joysticks, but to these other two sticks here. And I think by default, those are bound to like the arrow keys, nothing that's essential. And of course you can rebind them if you want to. But either way you look at it, this is, in terms of reducing finger movement, this is a step up from something like Colmac or Dvorak. I mentioned the steep learning curve and on the Caracorder Discord server, there's a share your progress board where everyone kind of shares their progress and what speed they're at and how long they've been practicing. There's some really 
inspiring success stories here. This person, for example, I think they started like two years ago and now they're at 186 words a minute. It's fun to see those sorts of things. And actually they have special badges that you can get on the Discord server. If you get to 150 words a minute, you get this supersonic badge. And if you get to 250 words a minute, you get this hypersonic badge, which, sorry, hypercerebral badge. Hypercerebral means you, you can type faster than you can think, right? So that's kind of fun. Something to kind of motivate you uh, on the journey. I certainly am looking forward to the day where I get those badges. So kind of a fun little board here to participate in if you are serious about practicing with this thing. There are two ways to configure the care quarter, and one is the device manager, and that is web-based. That is what I plan to use pretty much exclusively con for configuration. You can configure the layout, you can remap keys to different things. I'm not going to do this quite yet. <laughs> I still need to get, get the hang of the default layout, and then I might explore remapping things. I, I definitely, one thing I'm pretty sure of is that I'm going to remap some of those special characters to the base layer, like curly brace, square bracket, parentheses, things that developers need. On the Discord server, there is a board specifically for discussing layouts, and there are quite a few threads on there about developer-oriented layouts. So I haven't checked those out too in-depth yet, but a lot of them put the parentheses and those special characters on the base layer. I plan to check those out, but yeah, you can remap everything here and tailor the layout to your workflow. The other important part is the library. The library is where you configure chords. There are 500 chords configured by default when you first get the care quarter. Obviously that's not the entire English language and your chords are going to be specific to your workflow to some extent. You are going to use certain words more often than other people. I think that's kind of the reason they don't pre-configure more than 500 chords in this thing. For example, there's probably some names that you're going to type a lot, right? And you, you might want to make chords for those. That's super handy. If someone's full name is like 20 characters and you make a, a five-letter chord for that, that's going to save a ton of typing, right? The other way to configure the care quarter is via what's called GLM. I don't remember what that stands for, but it's basically a text-based interface. And this interface works anywhere you can type text. And it's a very clever mechanism, actually. It actually types out the menu. And then when you select a uh, part of the menu to go to, it'll delete everything that's on the screen and then replace it with the contents of that menu. So I'm gonna hold down Alt with both my pinky fingers. Now I've got the menu and I can type C to get the chording section, right? And now this is the chording section. I think you can configure chords directly using this menu. That can come in handy if you need a chord really temporarily or something like that or you just wanna be able to program chords really quickly, maybe this is the route to do that. Personally, I'm going to be using the web interface for this foreseeable future, but that's just me. It comes with this uh, layout map, which is a, kind of a nice reference card. And if, when you look at the default layout, it seems a little bit random at first, but when you think about it, there's a lot that probably goes into optimizing the default layout for cording, right? If you're optimizing for cording, you wanna make sure the most commonly used words don't have letters that fall on the same joystick, right? The same switch. I think that's kind of why they put things where they are. Things seem a little random, like U is is a downward press on, on this finger, O is a downward press on this finger, R is a right ways press on, with this finger, E is a downward press with that finger, uh, G and W. So there's, there's no correlation between the layout here and a QWERTY keyboard. Not that that would give you an advantage if there was a correlation, but the, the default layout of the letters is pretty, seems pretty well thought out to me. CC2 is not the only care quarter product. There are, uh, the CC1 came before it and the CC2 aims to, I've never tried a CC1, but apparently the CC2 aims to correct a lot of the issues that people had with the CC1. I think there was some switches breaking and some other issues, characters being repeated. I don't I'll know all the issues, but CC2 aims to fix those. I have not had any issues whatsoever with it yet, so that bodes well. Again, I've only had it for a few weeks and only practiced maybe, maybe 10 hours, maybe not even that much. There are some other products. There is the Caracorder Lite, which is a QWERTY keyboard that supports cording. The CC2 narrative, there's two parts to it. There is the the physical device and the, the joysticks, the five-way switches, and then there's the cording. And these are two separate things. You don't necessarily need one for the other. They just happen to put them both in the CC2 device. So if you only want the cording aspect of things, the care quarter light, there, there's also something called a master forge, which is not at the top of the website for some reason, but 
I think it's still in the early stages. It's still in pre-order. I think some people at the time this video is being made, some people have received theirs. They were part of like a Kickstarter campaign, but it looks really nice. I would love to get my hands on one. It's essentially the same idea as a Karakor CC2, but it's got a metal body and it looks like some RGB lighting. It looks very, very nice. I would love to try one. By the way, the CC2 uh, costs $250, not cheap by any means, but not out of reach if it's something that you're passionate about. The Master Forge is more expensive. I think it starts at like, I don't know, let's take a look. Yeah, pre-order for the Master Forge is $500. Wow, that's a lot for an input device, but I mean, if it makes you 10 or 20% more productive, that's a small price to pay, right? People complain about keyboards being too expensive. And if you're used to paying $30 for a keyboard, you can pay $30 for a keyboard and get a decent keyboard. So paying $500 is not going to, it's gonna feel a little bit uncomfortable, but when you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, you're getting, it may be getting 10 or 20% more productivity. That's a really small price to pay, right? So I'll get off my soapbox about that. So does this device live up to the hype? Can it get you typing at the speed of thought? It seems like the answer is yes. There are the CEO of Caracorder types at the speed of thought. He's posted tons of videos of him using the device. There are some other people on the Discord server that have that hyper cerebral badge. Who doesn't want a hyper cerebral badge? It seems to be somewhat rare. But these devices have only been around for a few years. The CC1 came out four or five years ago, I think. So there hasn't been a ton of time for people to fully acclimate. It seems based on the anecdotes I've seen in the share your progress message board, it seems like to fully get, com you can kind of ditch your QWERTY keyboard after a few months of practice if you're really deliberate about it, if you're really diligent about it, but your typing is going to be, I see numbers like 60, 70 words a minute kind of around the average QWERTY typing speed at, at that after that much practice. It seems like people need a solid year or two to get to the really fast speeds. And that might seem like a lot of time, but that's a small, small investment. If you consider the entire span of your entire career, say you spend two or th even three years practicing on the Caracorder, if that gets you to double your QWERTY typing speed for the rest of your career, that seems like a good investment. So I have very high hopes for the Caracorder. I can't, it hasn't made me type at the speed of thought quite yet. I am optimistic. I'm going to stick with it. I'm gonna keep practicing. I'll, I plan to make another video maybe a year from now and report back on my progress. Maybe I'll talk about it before then, I don't know. But so far I am loving this device. I think it is very promising. It could be the successor to our QWERTY keyboards. Maybe, I don't know. To be interested in a device like this, you have to be pretty forward looking. And if you're forward looking, you're probably at least somewhat interested in how large language models work. I actually made an entire video showing how to build a full stack chatbot in Rust using open source language models. But I also wanna recommend the course, How LLMs Work by the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. I'm currently working my way through the course and so far it has really helped me understand how language models work behind the scenes. I thought I knew language models, but this course opened my eyes to a lot that I didn't know. Brilliant distinguishes itself by putting an emphasis on learning by doing. If language models aren't your thing, they have thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. Skills that can really help give you an edge in this industry. One of the really nice things about Brilliant is that it makes mobile devices a first-class citizen, so you can jump back into your favorite courses when you're on the go instead of, you know, mindlessly scrolling tech Twitter or something. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash code to the moon or scan the QR code on screen. Or you can click on a link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I hope this video has helped you decide whether the Caracorder is for you. If you like this video, you'll probably like this other video that goes over the beginning of my keyboard journey where I spent over $2,000 on a number of different keyboards and wound up picking the Glove 80 as my favorite. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.